paper, and, and you know, after that we will have uh, a session for all your burning questions. Our final paper, uh, as I said, is actually a paper by Professor Alian al Kradawi, who couldn't come, uh, and uh, which will still be presented. But I'll just read out a little bit about uh, Dr. al Kradawi. He's a professor at the School of Social Work at Memorial University of Newfoundland, Canada. And his research interests include multicultural mental health, political violence, and social work with indigenous populations. He's conducted uh, lots of studies in Israel, Canada, Palestine, and other Arab countries. And is currently working on a book dealing with polygamy and mental health in the Middle East. And uh, to present his uh, paper, uh, we have uh, Dr. Noraini Osman, who is uh, a board member uh, of Sisters in Islam, uh, and was Professor of Sociology of Religion at IGMAS at UKM until uh, January uh, 2011. Thank you. Thank you, Marina. Um, usually, um, in CIS work for advocacy, we always complain about uh, the silence voice of women is only men speaking up for women, so I'm glad to be speaking up for uh, an Arab, is Arab Bedouin by the name of Alian Krenawi. <laughs> He's actually, since six months ago, had been uh, appointed as president of Akbar Academic College. Uh, he was before that uh, in Canada. So, just to give you an idea that uh, Professor Krenawi has been doing research on uh, comparing polygamous marriages, particularly looking at wives, senior first wife and junior wives, as well as comparing it with a monogamous family. Uh, his, by training, is a, a clinical uh, psychology, but he has also done work, especially with his Canadian colleagues who are um, uh, a psychiatrist. So you see that he has been looking uh, for about 13 years now um, about healthcare. Um, oops, sorry. Um, doing social work and comparing uh, women from polygamous and monogamous marriage in an outpatient psychiatric clinic. And he, I will show later on how, um, how much um, the effect of mental health um, on first wife particularly and to some extent also some of the second and third wife. So we start, we start by uh, a quote of a Palestinian woman that's in one of his research study. My husband had been telling me that he will remarry and have the co-wife live on the second floor. I always wish the second floor would be destroyed. And during the Israeli incur incursion in Hebron, the Israeli soldiers destroyed the second floor and all the furniture that I was happy. So, <laughs> uh, one Palestinian woman happy uh, with the incursion by Israel. <laughs> so, so what he has been looking at is the polygamy and the psychosocial consequences. Women in polygamous marriage report less life satisfaction than women in monogamous marriages in most of all the studies that I showed earlier that he has published. In the economic realm, while polygamy could potentially ease economic burden by facilitating collaboration and the joint pursuit of family's economic well-being, the husband do mobilize his two or three wives to help uh, with the economic well-being, with the sustenance, with the maintenance, which in our sister's research uh, project in Malaysia too, we find that kind of subsidization of, um, of polygamy by first and second wives. Uh, and in one case in Kelantan, uh, one of the uh, one of the husband asked me, "Is it possible to ask the Ministry of Women Affairs?" At that time, it was Sharizat when I interviewed him. Now that we have petrol subsidy, can the government give us a polygamy subsidy? <laughs> but in actual fact, women wives have been subsidising. So for he also uh, quoted for in Ghana, for instance, women in more polygamous regions tended to have less schooling and to experience greater economic hardship than their counterparts in monogamous regions. So, uh, some people in, in our conference just now keep asking why don't we compare. So we are now showing some of the findings um, 
of the comparison of polygamous and polygamous uh, marriages. Polygamous women in the Gaza Strip and Jordan experienced great economic distress apart from the dis political uh, situation. And in this case, uh, they tend to refer first wife as senior wives were more adversely uh, affected. He also looked at polygamy and the consequences on children, particularly adolescent children and also men, uh, the husband. Several studies carried out in the Middle East and Africa indicated that children and adolescents of polygamous families may suffer from emotional, behavioral, and physical problems such as lower self-esteem, lower school achievement, greater difficulties in social adjustment than children or adolescent in monogamous marriages and they reported more behavioral difficulties in school compared to those from monogamous union. It was also found in one of the other studies that both male and female adolescents are less supportive of polygamy than adults, objecting mainly to the economic difficulties and communication problems among children of different wives. We showed in the video at the end of some of the findings where you, where you could see that the the, the children of first and second wife do not recommend um, polygamy. So very little attention has been focused on how polygamy <coughs> affects the mental health of men. Uh, there was study in, among Yoruba men found that those who married more than one wife were less likely to become mentally ill than those in monogamous marriage. So I suppose if Malay men said it's to prevent me from sinning, the Nigerian Yoruba men said to, uh, to keep for my mental health. Uh, so. And the study by Profenta and Gate in 2009 uh, showed that the husband's overall just treatment of all his wives is affected by the level of change. So this is um, also similar to our finding that the demand on supporting two more than two household uh, or more than one or sometimes two or three uh, can bring uh, some pressure into to the husband. He also looked at the effect of uh, psychosocial and mental health effect to the wife in the order of the marriage, where the senior wife, meaning first wife, and junior wife, uh, looking at second and sometime uh, third wife. And I will show you soon the, 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 the finding. And he also tried to quote uh, about polygamy and Islam. Uh, but what is slightly different from the case of some of his cases in uh, Middle East, Middle Eastern societies among the uh, Arab Israelis that in Malaysia uh, most of the polygamous marriages household maintain separate household but um, in the case of uh, the Bedouin Arab I suppose because of economic uh, constraints sometimes they have to share uh, live in the same household uh, uh, he speaks of somatization in the Arab world how uh, Senior wife's first wife come to the clinic or goes to see a doctor saying that he, she got a headache, she got palpitation, she's weak or she thinks she suffer from uh, some heart problem. But actually it is caused by anxiety, depression and problems uh, due to competition, rivalry or just uh, tension and difficult relationship uh, with husband. So senior wives in polygamous marriage may exhibit body aches, headache, insomnia, fatigue, and nervousness. That's what they would complain and that's what brought them to the clinic. But upon further uh, consultation, it was obvious that um, it was caused by, by polygamous marriage and it was uh, a psychosocial uh, problem and even mental health. Um, the current study that he's doing now is in Syria. Uh, he gave me a draft of the paper, although I shouldn't quote it, but he said do uh, use it for, to illustrate some of the finding mental health and polygamy in the Syrian case. Uh, the sample consisted of 136 women, 64 from polygamous families, and 72 from monogamous families. Now 62.5% of the women from polygamous families were first wife that he interviewed, their husband's first wife, senior wives, while about 34.3% were second wives and 3.2% were third wives. And this uh, that data from Syria was collected from Arraqqa, a city north in north central Syria, located on the north bank of the Euphrates, about 160 kilometers east of Aleppo. It is the capital of the Arraqqa governorate and one of the main cities of the historical Dia Mudar, which is the western part of the Jazeera. So the, the data was collected during the summer of 2010. 
um, this is him describing um, his method using the McMaster family assessment device. Don't ask me on questions on this technical aspect. But he assured me in the, the writing, in the, in the written part of the paper, um, that the basis, I suppose I can refer for, for those who are interested, what the, the technical device um, means in terms of to, to look at various seven dimensions of family functioning, problem solving, communication, uh, roles in the family, emotional involvement in the marriage, in running the household in, in the family, uh, behavior control, emotional responses, and just general functioning uh, of being husband, wife, uh, and, and children, particularly adolescent children. He used the Enrich questionnaire, which were to measure satisfaction in marriage and to see the quality of adjustment of particular members uh, in the marriage. and. These are all the technical uh, details of looking at the items of self, the, the issue of self-esteem, as well as satisfaction about life uh, generally. So, but uh, his interest, his focus is to look to measure the symptom intensity uh, about interpersonal sensitivity, somatization of uh, emotional feelings uh, to medical, physical problem, uh, OCD, obsession, compulsion, uh, depression, anxiety, hostility, phobic anxiety, paranoid ideation, and psychoticism. So it's not fun to be in a polygamous marriage and our 200 over first wife and certain percentage of the 219 or whatever second wife that we interviewed in KL also sp speak of stress and tension. So, but the main finding is that family functioning uh, breaks down. Women from polygamous families did not uh, experience uh, more problems in family functioning compared to uh, women from monogamous family in some of the uh, sample uh, in the other studies, but when he compared it to the Syrian one, that shows the, the, the contrast. Um, the findings supported the re his research hypothesis that the family structure is the major predictor of marital relationship, of the question of self-worth, self-esteem, uh, the subjective sense of well-being, and <coughs> mental health uh, symptom. Specifically, uh, the findings in that 136 study in Syria demonstrated that women from polygamous families experience less marital satisfaction, lower self-esteem, and less life satisfaction compared to monogamous women. What is good about his research and data is that, in this case, he looks at polygamous and monogamous, and he looks at first wives, second wives, and even 3% third wives. So, Overall, the finding polygamous women were found to have more mental health problems, particularly if you are the first wife. And polygamous women experience more somatization, again, uh, the, the, what I've uh, related earlier. And he also looked by using the general severity index to evaluate uh, the severity of the mental health problem. Polygamous women was higher uh, in terms of general severity experience compared to mon monogamous women in the Syrian study, indicating that polygamous women experience more mental health uh, symptoms or risk or problems. Um, and he called, he, he somewhat uh, sort of summarized uh, this problem as the first wife syndrome. Uh, in polygamous families, first wife experienced greater psychological and mental health problems. First wife reported on more family problems, less self-esteem, more anxiety with a headache, with a, um, a high blood pressure and palpitation and insomnia, more paranoid ideation and more psychoticism. Uh, I believe in my exchange of email, he said some of the first wife had dreams of, of wanting to um, kill the husband or do a bit of violence, and so that upset her all the more. Um, so part of the discussion of his findings, the present study in Syria reveals significant differences between women in polygamous and monogamous marriages, which supported previous studies that he had done, where he also compared, I think, uh, in Jordan and in UAE. Uh, marital satisfaction, self-esteem, life satisfaction, all indicating less subjective well-being for polygamous women. Many of the mental health 
symptoms were more common for polygamous women, particularly noteworthy, again, what I mentioned earlier, and, and he even evaluated through the severity uh, index. So findings from the current study regarding polygamy among Syrian women is consistent with previous study that he has conducted in UAE, Kuwait, <coughs> Egypt, Jordan, the Gaza Strip, Arabs in Israel, Palestine, Palestine and Turkey, which points out that the wives in polygamous marriages have reportedly more psychosocial, familial, and economic problems compared to their counterparts from monogamous families. Those who are interested, uh, these are the publications based on the study that you mentioned. So results of the current study supported what you call this hypothesis, the first wife syndrome, wherein first wives in polygamous families experience a major psychological crisis that manifests physically as well as psychologically. Just now in our session, um, in the afternoon, uh, a number of papers speak about the pressure on husband to fulfill the deliran, the roster, the turn taking, as well as demand of his time uh, to spend time with the two different families, with the two different wives, and demand from children, small children, as well as adolescent uh, children. So I suppose we could also try to hypothesize the polygamous Muslim male syndrome uh, by looking, by you know, uh, outlining what are the problems uh, that he faced. Because I think one of the paper presenters speak, the men speak that the, uh, the wife live, the two wives live in different part of Klang Valley, and you know how traffic jams are awful feature of the Klang Valley. So. We're not, we're not sure from what he, from the interviews, whether it's, a, I think it's a combination of having to, not bicycle, but to drive, to commute from first wife to second wife in traffic jams. So he actually have um, um, high blood pressure. And uh, <laughs> privately, uh, he also uh, said to one of our male research assistant who later on uh, to interview him on aspects of uh, sexuality that sometimes he couldn't fulfill the nafkah batin. He just could not perform. I don't know whether it was the pressure. I think it must be the pressure of uh, the tension, uh, you know, made worse by traffic jam. I decided not to work in UKM since January 2011 because I can't stand the traffic jam from Subang Jaya uh, to Bandar Baru Bangi. So the present findings show that first wives in polygamous families experience, definitely experience more anxiety, uh, paranoid and psychoticism compared to second and third wives, and that first wife reported on more family problems, and again, self-esteem. Uh, so for him, it is essential for practitioners, particularly uh, medical doctors and psychiatrists and clinical psychologists to be able to recognize and interpret these symptoms, particularly in relation to the potential underlying possibility of polygamous family structure as an implicating factor. Further research is required to compare women in polygamous marriages based on their order, first, second, and third, etc. And one of the limitations of this study is the small sample, in particular when comparing first, second, and third wives. Uh, con so in conclusion, this study raises several issues. Practitioners and policymakers need to be aware of the psychological, familial, and economic effects of polygamy on women and their children. I believe Professor Akranawi is also involved. Uh, I think it was in UAE uh, to submit a report to some <coughs> governmental bodies about providing more uh, medical services uh, for families, particularly polygamous families. So as the result point out, higher marital distress in, in a polygamous family may in turn exacerbate the negative role modeling and impede ch children's growth and achievements. And I believe I've read one of the uh, one of the articles that I cited earlier, where he looked at the school performance, school achievement of adolescent children uh, and primary school children of second and third wives. Finally, this study serves as an outlet for women to voice their problems in polygamous marriages and raises the question of mental health of people where polygamy is practiced. So we do hope that perhaps soon or later this year he would be able to come and perhaps we, uh, together with some members of my research team, we can further look at some of the uh, issues of mental health uh, with our Muslim 
second, first wife and second wife. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Narayani. Well, it, it, I think it just goes to show, you know, that there are many of these uh, issues which we kind of know anecdotally, which we kind of feel is happening. But what we're seeing is really, you know, research evidence both elsewhere and here in Malaysia that these things that we, we know anecdotally is not confined to one or two women or one or two families, it's actually across, across the board. You know, it is real and it's happening to a lot of people. And so, including children. Including children. I think children are the least studied uh, aspect of this, the, the most neglected aspect uh, of polygamy. And it's high time that uh, we look at it because you know, what sort of a society are we developing if we have a lot of depressed, stressed, pressurized people who felt